What is going on everyone? Welcome to the video. Uh, so today what I figured I'd do is take you guys through um, week four, day two, which is the push day in my push pull legs program. One thing that isn't included in my push pull legs program is direct neck training. And I do still do that two, sometimes three times a week. And I had the good people over at Neck Flex send me this contraption right here. So I got so many hilarious comments about this when I posted it on my Instagram. Um, but it's a really interesting device. This isn't sponsored or anything, by the way. They were just nice enough to send it to me. Patty Lifts neck assistant over here. It's gonna help me out. Um, so I'm gonna throw this on. We're gonna do two or three sets here and then we're gonna get started with some bench press. And I'll do like usually 20 reps like this for my first set. How you feeling? Yeah. Here's five steps. <laughs> I love this because you your hands are not involved so there's no way that you can cheat. Like it has, I guess I could use a bit of momentum at my hips but pretty much has to be your neck doing the work here. Oh man, I got a sweat going. It's a good, good little warm up too. Want to give it a shot? Let's do it. Let's get it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that looks so funny when he does it for some reason. I probably look just as dumb. <laughs> it's because his hands are up. On Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, when I shared this on my IG story, for some reason your hands were like this. So Bro, people like, were like, <laughs> he looks like a struggling T Rex or something. <laughs> he was like, like Bro, that like do like like you know, like do like, all that. Yeah. All right, we're gonna do two more rounds each, and then we're gonna hop into some bench press. So this is the workout we have today. So push number one, and it's day two. My printer kind of cut it off there a bit. But yeah, we just did a bit of direct neck training. If you are gonna be doing it, make sure you're stretching out properly, doing a proper warm up, and do your head rotations and all that kind of stuff I've talked about in other videos. Anyway, after that, we're gonna hop into uh, a barbell bench press as the first exercise. We're doing three sets, four reps, 85% one rep max. So I'm gonna plug that into my calculator and see what that is for me. So 0.85, and I'm putting in my one rep max is 350 pounds. Um, so that'll take me to 297.5. I'm gonna actually round that down from my first set to 295, see how that feels. And if it's moving quite easily, I might go up to 300, we'll see. And we'll probably do three, maybe four warm up sets, pyramid our way up to that weight, and then begin the real work. So here we go. And with your warm-ups, you want to treat them as if they're working sets. So try to use the same technique, same positioning, same explosive power off the chest as if you actually had your working weight on the bar, but kind of neurologically program in what you're going to be doing later. So I want to really quickly take you guys through the gear that I use for bench pressing. Um, so starting from the bottom up, the key theme here is that we want to eliminate any potential force transfer loss from the base of support on the ground all the way up to where the bar is moving off your chest. Um, so just starting with the bottom, I'm using a powerlifting shoe with a raised heel. So these are the Adidas Lightsung 2s, and they've got a one inch raised heel. And that's good because if you're doing the bench press pro properly and initiating with leg drive, so driving your heels into the floor, there will be a tendency to wanna to go up on your toes to get that extra bit of drive. And so if you have a raised heel, it can make it a lot easier to not do that because you've got this extra elevation off the ground already. And then also it's a very flat bottom of the shoe. So it just gives you that very stable base of support. And with the bench press, that really is where that force is, is initiating from, is, is from the ground. You wanna think about driving your feet into the ground and pushing the floor away from you as you push the bar up and back. Up next from there, we've got the Rise Old School Belt. And I like this one instead of the lever belt for benching because I find it's not quite as heavy on my midsection. It's not quite as clunky. And basically what this does is what any belt will do, and that's increase intra-abdominal pressure. So as I take my air in before every rep, you can see that my gut is pushing out against the belt. And what that does is creates almost like a rigid column in your abdomen so that there's no opportunity for force to be lost in the midsection either from moving around, and then also it gives you something to push against. I wouldn't say that a belt is mandatory by any means. Some power, power lifters use it, some don't for the bench. But I figure if I have one and I'm using it for squats and deadlifts, I do find it gives me that like 
two to 5% edge on the bench press, so I do throw it on. Up at the wrist, I've got these uh, lifting wraps. They basically prevent any movement of the wrist back and forth, um, so that's a potential to create a moment arm and to lose some force transfer if your wrist is moving back and forth. So this helps lock everything in. Um, I won't use them for my warm-up sets. I also won't use my belt for my warm-up sets. Uh, but once the weight gets heavy, I do find that these give me that just extra little bit of stability and support. And I'll have all the stuff linked in the description box below if you want to check it out. Um, like I said, none of it is mandatory by any means, but it may give you that little bit of edge in terms of safety and performance. Sets of four with 85% is pretty heavy. As the program goes through, pushing it up and up. Five, three. One, two, ah, here we go. Hopefully I get in my groove a little better. That felt pretty heavy. Does it look looks okay? smooth, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, it looks smooth. Maybe it's just in my head then. Sometimes that first one is the worst because it takes a while to get into a groove, so. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Now that Mythbus Monday is over, I think next month I'm going to be launching a new series called Technique Tuesday where I'm going to go through all of the exercises, all the main ones anyway, and from like top to bottom go through all the different technique cues that I use, what the science says on different executions and so forth. So I'm going to save my full bench press tutorial for that, but that's on the way soon. All right, let's get it. Come on. Come yeah. on. Here we go. One, two, three. Ah, here we go. Easy, let's get it. I hate when it doesn't move as fast as I want it to. It's like sometimes I'll come in and it just like springs off my chest and then other times it feels like dead weight. But that's the way it is. It is what it is. As long as it moves, I'm happy. I still feel like I could have got a couple more reps, but not much more than that. All right guys, up next we got seated dumbbell shoulder press. Three sets of eight to 10. One of the old tricks that I use on this is you wanna to try to get the bench as close to where the dumbbells that you're gonna be using are, so you don't have to waste all your energy doing farmer's walks just to get to the bench. Cause I actually can tire you out. We're trying to train the shoulders here, like not the forearms or the traps or anything. So I'll move the bench like in here. And then that way I can just take the dumbbells off, sit them down and get them up. Don't waste as much energy, so. There you go. Jeff crushes everyone at this one. Oh yeah. Halfway through the set, like right here, there's just a ring, just a call coming in. Oh, forgot to oh, set it on do not disturb. <laughs> Don't call me on rep four. <laughs> yep, okay, here we go. There we go. Good. Good job, bro. That was solid. I actually felt better than the first two. Up next, we got three sets of weighted dips, six to 10 reps, and we're really gonna focus on form here and not going too close to failure. Um, so I like to go out around an RPF seven on these, so we're leaving about three reps in the tank. And in terms of execution here, we're really trying to target the pecs, not just the triceps, even though we will to a degree. On these machines, there's usually an outside a setting and an inside setting. I actually like to go one outside, one inside, so it's kind of like a moderate grip width. You want to tuck your elbows in, but not all the way in. So you don't want to be pressing out here, but you also don't want to be pressing in here. So I like about a 45 degree elbow tuck. And then you want to position your torso about 15 degrees forward. So about here, rather than just going straight up and down, you want to get your chest more involved by positioning slightly forward, crossing your legs over here at the bottom, and you're going to dip down and press up. And that's it. So I'm gonna strap in, see what feels good today. And these, these are one of my favorites. These are great. If you feel any shoulder pain on these, I would do like maybe a decline 
press instead, but um, if you can do weighted dips, I think they're fantastic. Overall mass builder, chest, pecs, triceps, just general strength. I didn't rest quite as long between that one. It felt, felt way harder. I just remembered this because Rashawn asked me if I was excited to go to Hong Kong. So Steph and I are both going to Hong Kong um, on the 15th. So by the time this is out, we'll be there. But we're doing a seminar at Volume Hong Kong Gym. It's gonna be October the 21st at 2 p.m. So I'll have all the information about the seminar linked in the description box below if you guys are interested. Um, if you're from Hong Kong or somewhere close by, uh, come out and say what's up. Love to meet you guys. It's a pretty good wait. All right, so guys, up next we're doing low to high cable flies. With the pecs, you have the primary function being transverse shoulder adduction, so bringing your arm in closer to the midline. So that's what you're doing when you're pressing, when you're doing flies or what have you. The upper pec also assists in shoulder flexion, so raising your arm up like in a front raise. The front delt also does this, but so does the upper pec. And that's why when you go on an incline, you tend to activate the upper pecs more is because now you have more shoulder and shoulder flexion involved. So when we do these low to high, we're getting a bit of shoulder flexion involved. And then also you have internal rotation. So if you just put your palm up, facing up, and then point it down, you can feel your, your pecs shorten here. If we go from externally rotated to internally rotated, abducted to adducted, and then also more extended to more flex, you're getting all three biomechanical functions of the pec in. So you'll see he's externally rotating at the bottom, internally rotating up here at the top, flexing his shoulders up so that he gets his upper pecs more involved, and then making sure he's bringing the cables in and not just up. Yeah. Okay. So, up next we have three sets of 15 with dumbbell lateral raises. One thing I've been doing lately that's actually quite different is I've been trying to keep these under constant tension. So, rather than letting the dumbbells come to a stop on my sides, I'll stop about three quarters of the way down and then go back up. What I think of this as is a novel means of applying a prog progressive overload here. Because once you get to the point where you're at like 30 to maybe 40 pound dumbbells, you really can't load it any heavily. Like you, you kind of max out your strength at that point and then you increase the risk of injury and you, you, there's almost no way you're not gonna use momentum. Um, so what I've done is I've knocked myself back down to about 20, 25 pound dumbbells and I just stop the range of motion about here and then reverse it again. And it makes it so much harder. So if you guys are stuck on dumbbell lateral raises and you feel you're not able to progress any further, just try this slight variation out. I guarantee you it'll make it a lot harder. You'll have to go a little bit lighter at the beginning. Up next, we've got dumbbell isolateral skull crushers. So here, we're gonna be working both arms individually. And this is another exercise where I really feel like constant tension has some merit. It's actually been shown in one study in particular to have specific merit when it comes to skull crushers. I did a video on that like a year or two ago. Um, so I'll link that below if you're interested. But here we're trying to keep constant tension on by not completely locking out on the way up and then keeping our elbows somewhat back on the way down. So when I extend, I'm actually finishing back here. So the tricep is forced to always be on. So when I'm extending, I'm more back behind my head rather than out here in front of my face, if that makes sense. So a couple little form tweaks there, but other than that, we're just doing a simple three sets of 12 reps. So we'll start here, bring the elbows back a bit, feel the triceps turn on. Three quarters of the way up. Nice, bro. Those are hard. Next, abs. I think it's just abs, right? Yeah. yeah. So I've got an ab wheel rollout, but I've been substituting those. Sometimes I find them put a little bit of pressure on my lower back. So I'm gonna do a decline ab med ball crunch throw instead. It sounds super random, but it's one of my favorites. One more. Nice, do three on your own now. Let's go. Yeah. 
Okay. All right, guys, that's a wrap for this workout. Let me know if you enjoyed this style of video where I kind of just like take you through the workout as I do it. Really easy for me to produce and I have a lot of fun making them, so just let me know. Um, the whole full 16-week push-pull legs program is available on my website, so if you go to jeffnipper.com, you can get it there. I also have a link down there in the description box below. It's a two-block training program, slightly different focuses in each block. There's coaching notes from me. Everything that I talk about in my videos is kind of condensed down into the program, so if you'd like to check it out, support me, get yourself a new program in the process. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next video.